So in the previous discussion, we had a chance to um, get introduced to some of the basics of, of, uh, of jumps, or the idea of jumps, by way of a C go-to statement. So in MIPS, there is no go-to statement. Um, but we have something that's very similar. We have a J or a jump instruction. So J just is an instruction in MIPS that says jump. And where you wish to jump to is going to be specified by your placing a label in there. So if you want to look at this code, you could uh, go to um, this GitHub repository and take a look at this, or you could find it on our shared, um, my shared Google Drive. But I also think I should have something here that we can work with right away. <coughs> so let's go back to the presentation and at the bottom of the presentation I have also included some of this basic source code. So I'll just copy and paste this in here and see if we can run with it. Um, so what you see here now is simple jump to a particular label. So there's a label here and that label could be just about anything that you'd like for it to be. It doesn't have to be uppercase or lowercase. It just has to be some marker as to where your code should go. It doesn't have to be on its own line. It could be um, just before the, the code that you wish to execute. So there's some flexibility as to where you place your labels. As long as it appears right before the code, it could be it could have a new line in front of it um, or after it. Um, so in this case, we're doing a bit of code. Uh, you see a bit of code that doesn't do much. It just simply starts right away with a jump to a label. And then um, this no op was just an easier way for me to um, put some instructions in really quickly without having kind of to go through um, this exercise that you see me doing here. All right, so I could have put in multiple additions, subtractions, and so forth, but a no op is just a simple um, empty instruction. It really does nothing, but it's there uh, to use up, uh, quite often it's there to use up cycles. Um, for some reason, your instruction may need to have a delay, or you may need to use up some number of cycles. Um, which you might see a little bit later when you um, see pipelining. So those no ops are just easier to write. So let me go ahead and assemble this. And let's see if I save this to um, my downloads area. So I'll save it. And it already exists. Do you want to override it? Sure. And let's assemble it. And you'll see that there is an instruction here that says JL1. So this JL1 um, in, is what the source code shows, but the basic code says J, and then it has a particular address. That address is a 004 um, ending in 14 for the last two hex digits. And it tells you where it's jumping. And you can see that that's the add instruction that we had over here in the original. So that's how it's encoded. And if you also look at this part over here, you'll see that it's encoded as a 32-bit word. So let's run it and see what happens. I, I will say more about that number 5 that's there um, briefly here. So let's go ahead and run it. Oops, it went rather quickly. So I'm going to adjust the run speed to maybe half an instruction per second, assemble it again, and run it. Oh, it's an immediate jump, so it's not going to do much, right? So it jumps and then it ends. So I'm going to change this around a little bit so that you can see um, a better application of the jump. So if I put this jump here, or I say jump to L1, and I put L1 at the top. That might be a more useful exercise. And so there, and it should, let's try this again. 
So I'll tell it to go step, step, step. So every two seconds it's doing an instruction and then you'll see it jump up to L1. Okay, so let me speed this up a little bit. And you can see that every time we get to the end, we jump back up to the top. So that's how this jump instruction um, works for us here. It's just, it just forces us to go to a particular label. Um, one other thing that I want to point out, I think I'll save this here. One other thing that I want to point out, if I go back to the original bit of code that I had here with um, the jump placed there at the beginning, let's assemble it and I'm going to do a single step and you see that it jumps to the end. What I want you to notice is that in the basic code you'll see that there's a 32-bit word and the last, um, the last number here is a 5. It's not an accident that where the jump instruction is one, two, three, four, five. Um, that there are five instructions um, after the jump instruction. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's add another instruction here. Let's assemble it. And notice that it turned into a six because there are now one, two, three, four, five, six instructions um, right after the initial jump. So that's the distance between um, this instruction here and this instruction here. If you count, there's one, two, three, four, five, um, and then this one is the sixth one. Um, so that's connected. That, we're going to make a, a connection to that a little bit later. But that is the um, um, a connection that shows us um, a little bit about how it's encoded. So the next thing we're going to look at is conditional branching. So we'll see that in the next segment.